Hi, folks, and welcome to another Saturday morning Simul Flange. I'm Matt, and I once again am alone as Benjamin is taking his siesta. La 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 la! I guess I could have called Mikey, but I haven't talked to that dude in a while. He's been a cool guy. He's been a cool guy talking to me on text, but I, I and I guess I should have invited him over because he probably could have made it this week or this this night. He probably could have, but. It is getting close to another Saturday, and I must do another Saturday morning Samoflans before air sun breaks dawn. Um, I was thinking about it. I was like, wait, do I need to record one? I think I do. And like I said, Benjamin's out, which is totally fine. Wish him well. Can't wait to have him back. Hope it's sooner rather than later. Hope we can get something in before I leave on vacation, but don't know. Because I'm taking up our last subject that we talked about. Uh, I had seen, uh, well, no, oh, 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 wait, what am I doing? I'm talking about the subject first. Oh, should I talk about the subject first and then save all the other stuff for later? Yeah, let's switch up the game a little bit here, folks. So usually when it's when I'm going solo, I give you 15 minutes of me just shooting the breeze and then I get to my top five. Why not reverse this? Why not give you my top five right now and then shoot the breeze? That way, if you're not interested, you can just go ahead and tune out, I guess, huh? May not be a smart way to do the format, but we're going to try it out here. All right, so this one came up after I'd seen Top Gun Maverick. And I, we haven't talked about this. I want to wait and save it for Prince of the Universe, but neither Bruce nor Wes have seen it. And I don't think they're going to see it. And that's a shame. I got to talk about it on the Thunder Pop podcast. Heck, maybe now would be the time. No, I really want to save that for a Prince of the Universe discussion. But I don't think, well, let me, let me I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on it. But anyway, this was after me watching uh, Top Gun Maverick. And I thought, wow, I could not believe that they brought out a sequel to a movie that was in the 80s, like 30 something years ago or whatnot. And I enjoyed the sequel better. It was really good from top to bottom. It will probably be my movie of the year. I don't know what else is coming out. But the stuff that I've seen so far does not even come close to Top Gun Maverick. I had heard lots of good things. I did not believe them. I was thinking, oh, you guys are just desperate to see a movie in theaters. That's all you're desperate about. You're going to be rant ranting and raving about the Thor movie or the whatever, you know, Jurassic World movie or whatever's next. Uh, you know, Top Gun Maverick will be a drop in the bucket. And no, it's killing it. It killed it in theaters. Uh, and I was like, well, I mean, it's got to be good. Let's see what's so good about it. Man, everything. That's the answer. Everything is good about that movie. Uh, like I said, I, I, I did not think it would be movie of the year. I remember when I did Saturday Morning Salmon Flange, top five movies I'm looking forward to. Maverick, I made a point to say, was not on my list because I, I was excited. It would have been on my list in 2020. It would have barely hung on to my list in 2021. But by 2022, I was like, I'm done with this. This movie has had more release dates than any other movie during the pandemic, and I'm done with it. I don't want to watch it. And uh, But then just the reviews were just killing it. Everyone was loving it. So I told my wife, come on, we got to go see this. So we got my mom to come over babysit the four kids we have now. It's hard to get, even though the movie theater is literally a quarter mile, if that, from our house. I mean, I can walk into the street, look down the road, and see the road to the center. I could probably see the Cinemark actually right down from the right down from the road too. Um, so we're right there, but we can't go because of all the kids we have. How ironic is that? So when we got to the theater, I was just blown. We were both blown away. My wife loved it too. It may be movie of the year for her too. Um, she hates Tom Cruise. I didn't know this, but she hates Tom Cruise. She's only loved him in the movie Rock of Ages which is a musical of 80s rock, which is why she liked the movie, really. Tom Cruise just happened to be in it. Um, but then she said this one was great, and she hates Tom Cruise. So this is the second movie that she's really loved that didn't have any of the aspects that Rock of Ages had going for it. Like Rock of Ages kind of a shoe-in for the misses there. But uh, she really enjoyed it. So uh, we came out just ranting and raving about it. I could not wait to talk about it. And I text Wes, and Wes is like, I haven't seen it yet. I, and then I asked Bruce, uh, what was it, a few weeks ago on Prince of the Universe? I went, hey, have you seen Top Gun Maverick? We can talk about that. And he went, no, I haven't seen it. I was like, dude. So, but it got me thinking. I talked to Benjamin about this because I think this was on Benjamin's top five uh, movies he was uh, uh, looking forward to seeing. And I said, Don't, we should totally talk about what other movies deserve 
the 30 year plus sequel you know the same the top gun maverick treatment and that's basically how this whole idea came about it's like you know top 5 movies that need i don't i don't remember how i was going to phrase this let me see if i have it on this notebook yeah long awaited movie sequels that may be what i'll call it top 5 long awaited movie sequels what has been something we've been holding our breath for yay not not years but decades on that we can't wait to see. Now, this is one comment uh, box that I cannot wait to see. I cannot wait to see what you guys are going to write in the comments because you guys may come up with some great ideas that I've just forgotten about. Again, it was so easy to come up with five. I, I didn't even do an internet search. I just came up with five at the top of my head, and I ranked them. Because usually the ones I come up with at the top of my head, there's nothing that trumps it. Now, does that mean there's nothing that trumps these? No, I have a feeling someone's going to hit me up with something that's going to be awesome. So I can't wait to read the comments for this podcast to see what I missed. Because I'm sure you guys will tell me. All right, so here we go. Number five, The Rocketeer. Hear me out. What year is it? Like in the 30s, I think, when the first one came out? So you'd have to set this one in the 60s or whatnot. And, of course, all the actors are old, older, but they're still in it. And now they're trying to get the jetpack again, more you know, more fancy style or whatnot. And now that maybe this is maybe the first one took place in the forties, so this would be the seventies. Either way, you have a new Rocketeer. You know, the new character, the new kid, is uh, coming back to be the Rocketeer and setting off an adventure. This time, it's not Nazis. It could be the Russians. Or a German faction maybe left over from the Nazi re- regime, maybe I guess I don't know. Either way, you know whatever the world power is that was our enemy back then, have them be the bad guy in this one and uh, just do the movie. But the I mean, and get the same music and the same feel of it. I can't remember who directed this movie now, uh, but I probably should look this up. But the thing is though. Rocketeer would make a perfect, belated, long-awaited sequel, in my opinion. If you've never seen the first one, it's a classic. It's a classic. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. All right, number four. And this one, it's a little bit of a catch-22. And now that I'm saying, I'm about to say this, there was something I penciled in that I do not see here. Where did I write that note? Because I, I, I have a scra- I have a almost semi-scratch through this. Because I had another another idea for a movie that would take its place. I do not see it on this note. So anyway, I'm going to go with this one. I'm tell you why I thought about scratching it off completely. But it is Christmas Vacation. Get this. I, I know that uh, Chevy Chase is much older now. But now he tries to hold Christmas. Or maybe Russ is having the first official family Christmas at his house. And, you know, so it's Chevy Chase and Russ now trying to... Or Russ is trying to put on the perfect Christmas holiday... And Chevy is there, you know, helping him out and with the gags and whatnot, because he can't be as animated as he used to be, but he can still be around for a few yucks. And it can center around Chevy Chase and Russ, too. Uh, Chevy Chase would be, I mean, Russ would be played by, what was his name, Anthony Scott Hall, one of, one of the original Russes there, who's still acting and could do it. Um, Beverly D'Angelo, I think is her name, still looks great today. She could come back. The only thing, and this is why I almost scratched off the list, I think you would need Cousin Eddie to make it feel like, you know, Christmas Vacation because Cousin Eddie was hilarious, right? He served a purpose. But Dennis Quaid is bonkers, cuckoo, crazy. I mean, legitimately crazy, living up in Canada or wherever, and no one's going to even hire him at all. And it's too bad because... I think you bring back an older cousin Eddie into it. It'd been great. I mean, yeah, you can bring back one of his children to be the crazy ones, I guess. But it wouldn't feel the same as cousin Eddie. Cousin Eddie made Christmas Vacation. Don't or do watch Christmas Vacation too. You know, cousin Eddie's vacation, island adventure or whatnot. It it has to be single handedly the worst movie in the world. We used to tell people about it. Just to see if they'd rent it. We say, oh, yeah, you got to rent Christmas Vacation 2. It's just as good, if not better, than the original. They go, really? And then they'd rent it and go, Matt, that movie sucked. And I was like, yes. And now you're in on the secret. Now you got to get someone else to watch it. It's like the ring tape. Now that you've seen it, you have to share it or the curse will follow you. And so uh, we, we got tons of people to rent that movie out. Blockbuster people were thinking, oh, man, they're going to be so pissed when they come back in here. 
But uh, it is a horrible mov- movie. I think Red Letter Media. I, I, yeah, they did. They did review this, and they just talked about how awful it was. I mean, it's really, really cheaply done, terrible, horribly written, horribly written, and just overall a disastrous film that is not funny. It has zero laughs in it, and uh, it should have been. It should have been great. But it's it's not. So you make this Christmas vacation kind of like a soft reboot, but you can keep Cousin Eddie in there. He he was on the island when all this was happening, I guess. But I, I just think the magic could happen one more time. If you got the right uh, writers, you always need a, good, a solid script for it. But I think that'd be good. But like I said, my only caveat, and maybe, yeah, I'm going to move this down to number five now. Because my only caveat is you really do need Cousin Eddie. I believe you do. You can... Agree or disagree in the comments below, but I think you need Cousin Eddie for this to work. For the ever-loving friggin' life of me, I do not remember the movie that I thought I could could jump in and replace this right now. Um, if it comes to me in the next week. Oh, maybe it was The Last Starfighter. I don't see it on here, but I remember thinking. But we'd already talked about The Last Starfighter as a TV series, I think. When we did like you know movies, old movies that deserve a TV series, and Last Starfighter could also be used as a movie as well. So let's, uh, uh, mm, yeah, we'll we'll put Last Starfighter in here as number four. And I mean, I, I, if you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, I gave my reasons. I think it would be cool that his son who is living on Earth, plays the video game, unlocks the Starfighter, Ultimate Starfighter experience, gets recruited, and then that's where he finds his real dad is this whole time. He's been fighting with the Armada. But his dad, I can't remember the actor's name, Lance Herkishin or whatever, is now running the Imperial Navy. I mean, he's the admiral, you know. And he had to abandon his son for the safety of his son because, you know, enemies of him would love to kill his son if they knew where he was. And since Earth is still kind of hidden, I guess, to most people or white from the star chart that, you know, he doesn't, you know, he just lets his son grow up by himself as an orphan or maybe with his just his mom. And he doesn't realize who his true parents are. Or maybe the mom is with the admiral and they just ship their you know son off like, you know, you know, Superman, Krypton, you know, they shipped him off to Earth and had him watch, being watched by in-laws or whatnot, like Uncle and Aunt Beru. I think it'd be a great uh, movie, too. A TV show would be great, but having it as a movie, that'd be great, too. So I'm going to put that in. Penciling that in to number four, Chris's Vacation out because it must have Cousin Eddie. Simply must have Cousin Eddie. Uh, and then I'm keeping the Rocketeer at five. All right, so... There you go. Boy, that was kind of a big waste, wasn't it? Doesn't matter. It's like I have plenty of time. It's just me. It's just me. So uh, let's go to the next one. The next one is, and I, I no, 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 I, no regrets. Never ending story. I say no regrets because the first one was so perfect and they never got to do a better one since. And never ending story two is okay. The actors are a little flat in it. The emptiness is fine. I don't mind that. I hear it follows the book more. I've never read the book. Maybe that's what I should do at the beach now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. I think I will read this at the beach. But uh, anyway, the, the second one was okay. The actors were just lame in it. And the third one is horrendous. I don't think I'll ever watch it again. But a young Jack Black is in it. He's one of the bullies. And this one, and it's just so terrible. It's so t- it's just oh, as the children say, cringe at times. It it's so bad, and uh, it it I just want to purge that movie from my mind because I love the first movie. I think the first movie is a gem, a gem. I can't wait to show that to my kids. In fact, I kind of want to see it right now. I wonder. Uh, the nothing's a little scary. That wolf guy at the end, he's kind of scary. So. Maybe my girls won't watch it. Either way, though, I'd love to watch that with my girls. I think they'd absolutely love it. But uh, I think they should do The Never Ending Story again. Here, and and, and it takes place like 40 years later or 30 years later, Sebastian is grown up, and Sebastian is now the old man in the bookstore, right? It's Sebastian, the original kid or whatnot. If they can find him from the uh, first movie, he's got to be in his 50s right now or 60s. So he could play the old shopkeeper and maybe he makes a comment that people don't read books anymore because books are a little less popular than what they were back in the day since the creation of the internet. The e-book, maybe he makes a gripe about the e-book like I have. Nothing like a good old-fashioned book in your hand. And maybe this new kid, yes, a new kid, 
uh, with a new name. It could even be a girl. I don't mind. And he or she find the never-ending story. And again, they steal it from the bookstore, even though Sebastian knows it's fine. That was on purpose. And then they start reading. And maybe it's the... And instead of them getting bullied and whatnot, maybe it's they don't have confidence or, you know, they, they have to learn some lesson, right? Maybe it, maybe maybe the person, oh, this is great. I'm coming up with this on the fly. It's a bully who gets it. A bully is stealing it because he thinks it may be worth something. But he gets thrown into detention and is bored and decides to read it while he's in detention. Oh, I'm loving this now. And now the bully is in the never-ending story, and he's got to learn to be kind to others. That's his that's his big turnaround here, his big story arc, his character arc here. Oh my gosh, this movie writes itself now. I'm loving this. Uh, so the bully has to learn to be kinder to people to solve his issues. And maybe he learns a lot. When he gets out of detention, he apologizes to the kids that he's bullied. You know, he goes back into... Yeah, this is perfect because he goes back into the store and returns the book and apologizes to the kid. I mean, to Sebastian, he's like, oh, don't worry. How is Balfour? You know, you know, maybe they ride on... He's like, what do, you, what do you say we take a ride on Balfour? And they do it. He's like, Sebastian, it's been years. You know, I don't know. I, I, I'm telling you. Maybe I should write this script and send this to Hollywood. This is a better idea than I remember. Holy cow. Hold on. Now that I have this idea written out in my head, I kind of wish Mikey and Benjamin were here to hear this. Oh, man. I, I, may, I may move this up to number two. I don't know. But anyway... There you go. I'm just keeping it for right now. The never-ending story. You wouldn't call it four. You would call it, you know, the next chapter. That sounds so cheesy, but it, it fits with the book theme. All right, so never-ending story, my number three. Number two. Number two, and I think I still like number two here. Uh, it's the sequel to Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Now, if you don't know, if you don't know, there was jokingly, I think John Hughes said this, but I don't know, he could have been right, because, um, oh, Matthew uh, Broderick and the other actor who played uh, Cameron, I can't think of his name right now, but they said that John Hughes always said, you know, he didn't think of, he didn't believe in making sequels, but it would be fun to come back 30 years later and make a sequel to Ferris Bueller's Day Off, because now... Because uh, they thought about making a sequel, but it's basically the same story regurgitated, and John Hughes didn't want to do that. A better idea he had was to wait 30 years. I'm not playing here. Come back. Matthew Broderick, Ferris Bueller's character, is, you know, uh, middle aged, maybe past his prime now. You know, he's not yet close to retirement, but he hates his job. It's just so boring. Cameron, who is his same age, maybe in the maybe in his fifties, late fifties, he's gone ahead and take an advanced retirement. Like he's even checked himself into a retirement home early, because he figures his life is over. It's classic Cameron, right? So what Ferris Bueller does is he skips work for that day, breaks Cameron out of the old folks' home, and they go on a wild antic field adventure. Where at the end, if I recall what what they were saying in the interview. Uh, Cameron would pass away. You know, he he had one great day where he basically lived his life, and he thanks Ferris and passes away. It's a little dark. Does Cameron have to pass die at the end of this story? No, but either way, I love the idea for that, and I really wish they'd do it. I know the actors would jump at a chance. I mean, you'd have to get the right director and, of course, an excellent script, as always with all these things. But boy, howdy, I would love to see that because... Ferris Bueller, to me, is just a classic. It ties so much into my childhood. Because, folks, there were two movies I watched as a kid. Well, maybe three, okay? The Star Wars trilogy, if that counts as one. I'd watch them all. We'd watch them all. Raiders of the Lost Ark, we watched that a lot, too. But, no, that 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 was third. That was distant third. Because it was Star Wars or it was Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Those were the movies. That was the only non-Star Wars movie I watched a million times. Probably, I've seen that, well, no, I've probably seen Star Wars more, only because I kept watching that when I got older, But I and I finally got to see Ferris Bueller's Day Off in the theater when they brought it back in 2020 when theaters were hurting for movie releases. I, was, I, I wasn't even happier. I don't know if I could be happier in a movie theater, sitting down, watching my old childhood favorite on the big screen that I got to miss when it originally came out. No better feeling in the world. Out of all, easily... Out of all the mo- older movies we've re- re-watched in theaters over the years, Ferris Bueller's Day Off is the pinnacle. It was so 
awesome to see that in theaters. Well, mm, I, I, I guess I can't count the re 97 re-releases of Star Wars and Empire and Jedi. Those were very memorable too. But it's got to be up there with those. I mean, because it's just it's great. And obviously, the Star Wars trilogy is in there because I'm a Star Wars fan. But those are those were big movies of my childhood too. So having Ferris Bueller's Day Off on the big screen was a little slice of heaven. Having a Ferris Bueller's and I would call it Ferris Bueller's Next Day Off. That's all you'd have to. I know I'm going with the next theme, right? The next chapter, next day off. But screw it. I just think that would be so witty. Ferris Bueller's next day off. So you can watch the first one or you can just watch this one. It's fine. You know, but it's, it's, ah, uh, that, that movie sells itself, man. Just the principle alone. Too bad John Hughes isn't alive today. He probably wouldn't make it. I don't know. Maybe uh, it's John Hughes. Maybe he would have. All right. Number one, I, I had a really hard time putting number one on this list because number one has all these have a snowball's chance, right? I mean, just someone decides, someone with a big name, an actor, a director, picks up this and Rocketeer, Never Ending Story, Christmas Vacation, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, or no, I'm sorry, Last Starfighter. All of those could be made into movies overnight. This one, there is zero chance, not because the main actor's dead, but the main actor has retired and there's physically no way he could do this role again, but it is Die Hard. Bruce Willis is suffering from some, I can't remember what it is, but you know he's basically gone the way of the Buffalo. He ain't coming back anytime soon, and he can't be John McClane anymore, right? He just can't, and that's sad. I wish they could have gotten this ball rolling. I know the, the sixth script was in production hell for years, and uh, Bruce Willis's disease got worse and worse. And I wonder if he had it, the onset of it, for Die Hard 5, because that movie is just total garbage. I love the Die Hard films. Uh, one through four, yeah, I, yes, I'm including four, are excellent. And five is just so awful. I watched it a second time thinking, well, maybe it's better than I remember. Maybe there's some good parts in it. It is just bad. Bruce Willis does not want to be there. You can see it on his face. And again, maybe that was the onset of his disease settling in. The, you know, you know, I don't care phase. but Because um, he's really just mailing it in, that whole movie. So I always wish, and that there was the big rumor, it was going to be a prequel sequel, right? This is the one where old John McClane is about to retire, but he's got one last big adventure, and it was from maybe someone he busted as a rookie cop who's now getting out of jail 30 years later, you know? And, the, and so there's a, a prequel in it because it shows how that cop, I mean, how that villain first started off. And this is also how Bruce met, I mean, uh, John McClane met Holly, you know, the prequel is. And then the sequel, he gets back with Holly. It's the big missing piece, right? We haven't seen Holly since uh, Die Hard 2. So, and the actress is still around, and she said she'd be glad to come back. And so you bring her back for the last movie and basically give John McClane and Holly one last happy ending, just like they did. You know, you can do it in the prequel, how they first met their first kiss, and now they're kissed today. And that's how it ends, you know? And the John McClane series should end after that, too. You know, but... And because because five was so terrible, I wanted six to be made just so we we would say, oh okay, five sucked, but don't worry, six ended it right. You know, it needs to have a good ending. If if it had ended on four, it'd have been fine. I'd have been happy. You know, I wouldn't have said we needed another one, but I think we need another one because it's such a great series. And the fifth one just totally blew ch you know barf chunks. It was awful, 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 awful. But again, we'll never see this one. And that is a shame. Want to see it? Yippee ki yay, yay. Make it happen, even though you can't. All right, so there's my top five. Folks, again, in the comments, let me know what your top five was. All right, short story time. Back when hazing was a thing in college, I actually partook of one way after I was done with college. <laughs> About four, oh, no, it was about six years later. So what was I? Probably, oh, yeah. I was late 20s by then, so I should have learned better. But uh, I had a lot of friends who were in college. This is back when I was working direct TV, And I need to start this off because my buddy was opening up his own little, he, he worked in IT, but he's opened up his own little, you know, I'm a Mr. Computer Fix-It guy. And he bought a bunch of T-shirts. He asked if I wanted one. I said, yeah. He went, would you mind wearing it? I said, I'll wear it today when I go out this weekend. I'll wear it. 
So when I got out of work, I wore it. Well, that evening, I was going to play a prank on a sorority of girls. Uh, one of the girls had contacted her boyfriend, who was in a frat, and she said, hey, I want someone to come over here and pretend to be an escaped convict. They had a you know, no cell phone weekend. So all your cell phones go into a pillowcase and you can't use them for the, you have to, be, you have to stay off your phone. This is the uh, mid 2000s. So, you know, phones weren't the end all be all. They weren't searching the internet. They were just doing text messages and stuff back then and making phone calls. So people wouldn't freak out too much unless you missed that text, right? So she put, they put them all in the back. Well, what they want to do was say, hey, there's been a rumor about an escaped convict. We're just going to lock our doors and play it safe, but we're going to have fun. The cops, you know, they got a cop to come by and explain it to them. But he said, well, don't worry, we're looking for him. But just, you know, keep an eye out. Well, then I was supposed to be the escaped convict. All right. So, uh, but the reason it was me is because these sorority girls knew everyone in this frat. So it doesn't matter if the guy dressed up in a, because I had like a little uh, wig. You know, they gave me a little, uh, what's a little, uh, oh, what's it called? Mullet and a little cap. But the thing is, though, none of the guys could do it because they would instantly be recognized. So he need, they needed someone who would not be recognized who could do it. And the guy goes, I think this guy I work with will do it for me. And he asked me, I was like, yeah, I'll totally do that, dude. I think that's hilarious. So I got dressed up, you know, a uh, little wife beater, sleeveless tee, as they call it now, and mullet head, and then a cap, you know, a little country boy cap. And I was like, this is awesome. Well, when we, it was a long drive out in the country to wherever this house was, and I had to poop. I mean, I was about to crap my pants. I went, dude, is there any place we can stop? He's like, no, man, this is out in the country. I don't know where we'll stop. And I was like, he said, can you just go on the, you know, outside? I went, no, it's number two. You know, I said, can you just go in there and get toilet paper? He said, no, they can't know I'm here. Like, we had to park away, too, and walk a little bit. And I was really hurting then. I was like, dude, I'm about to explode from my pants here. Well, I ran back, got my buddy's shirt, <laughs> took a dump right there over to the side in their front lawn, didn't even care, lost all dignity. It was coming out anyway, and I used the T-shirt to wipe my booty. <laughs> the next day he's like hey man did you wear my shirt i said oh yeah yeah, yeah. It, it was the shit I, I told him that yeah and i didn't tell him that i'd wipe my booty with it afterwards and wipe crap all over it and i just left it there i remember uh he had like a little um i don't know one of those uh fire camp shovels you know you collapsible little things and he brought that out and let me bury my poop. I was like, dude, I'm not going to wake up the next, I'm not going to have them wake up the next morning and see poop in their lawn. So we went to the ditch and dug a little hole and then I scooped up the poop and uh, stuffed the uh, <laughs> t-shirt in there too and just buried the whole thing. But we had to do that, okay, to kind of wait. And so what the deal was, I was supposed to come in, rattle on the door and scare them, you know, then show up, pop up in the window and scare them. That was it. So when I got there, um, I walked around the window once or twice, and they could, they didn't see me. They were so involved in some little game they were playing that, and and the other girls who knew about it had just you know they just forgotten I was coming, and they said, hey, just rattle on the door because they locked the door. I was like, okay, I'm gonna act like I'm beating it down. So I went back up to the house and I turned the knob and beat on the door. They forgot to lock the door, so I just stumbled right on in. That scared the bejesus out of all of them, even the ones in on the prank just lost their mind for a minute because they totally forgot I was going to do th they didn't know I was going to come in and so the play and they all screamed and just like in a horror movie they all went upstairs I'm not playing with you they didn't go toward the front door I was not I was in the back door they didn't run to the front door and run out they ran up the stairs I was scared because I wasn't even supposed to be inside I ran to the kitchen and another girl who realized, oh, wait, this is the prank guy, came into the kitchen and goes, oh, my God, you scared me. She's like, I'm sorry. I even knew you were coming, and that scared me. I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to lock the door. She went, I, th wait, we sh I thought we did lock the door. And I was like, okay, well, I'll go. She went, no, no, you should go upstairs and keep scaring them. I said, did they all run upstairs? She went, yes, everyone went upstairs. I went, why? Yeah, this is the stupidest thing in a horror movie you don't do. So I went upstairs, and they were talking. They were all crying, and they were in these rooms, and you could hear them shaking, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I was like, well, I'm just going to rattle on one of the doors. Well, I went to rattle on the door, and I'm not playing with you. That's when someone said, I wonder if he's gone. Let me look. 
Who does? Did they not watch horror movies? So she opens the door, and I just kick it down. And I'm, when I tell you the scream was so loud, I felt the noise. You know, like a big stereo blast, and you feel the noise. I felt and when the, when that when all those screams just hit me in the face, it shot me. And then I started laughing, and I took off my wig. I said, "Look, I'm a Josh's buddy." I said, "I'm with so and so. You girls just got pranked." I said, "I could not stop laughing." And there was one girl who's in the bathroom, and she was crying, and because she had re- it really terrified her. And so I came in there and I apologized to her. I said, "Look, they set me up. That you got set up on this. It's okay." I said, I'm not here to hurt you. Shouldn't. You were so lifelike. You look so scary. <laughs> I guess that's a compliment. I don't know. But yeah, now now, now that's a felony if you haze them. But boy, was it fun. <laughs> no regrets. All right, folks. That's it for now. See you next time on Saturday Morning Simo Flange. <laughs>